Hello, everybody. Welcome to the iTricks interview. Today, we are lucky enough to be talking with Jerry McCambridge, another one of our friends of the site. He, of course, performs at the Hooters Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas, and you can find more information at mentalist.com. Jerry, thank you very much for joining us. Oh, it's always my pleasure, Justin. Thank you for having me. Uh, well, you know, I'll tell you what, we, we couldn't have this series go on too long without an appearance from you, since you, you're definitely a good friend of the site. All right, let's start off with the questions. Who is your favorite performer who is not like you at all? So we're talking in the magic industry, but not a mentalist. Yeah, yeah, or or with your kind of persona, uh, just just all together, not Jerry McCambridge. I would say it would be a toss up between Doug Henning and David Copperfield. Uh, my my roots started with Doug Henning as a kid uh, when I was twelve years old. He became a little bit of a mentor for me, uh, mm -hmm. and as he phased himself out, you know, Copperfield phased himself in and. Uh, I'm from the old Tony Robbins school where you look at somebody who's successful and somebody that you want to be like and, and then you emulate them and follow their success and learn from their mistakes and Copperfield is as big as they get. Uh, so I, I've studied his success over the years. So probably David and Doug. Obviously your end results are very, very different, but what did you take from them uh, that, that really informed your own performing style or how you managed your career? Well, both of them did things differently. You know, uh, back in the, the 70s, a magician was tuxedo and top hat and Doug all of a sudden comes out with this, uh, you know, flower power, 60s child kind of image, totally different than the average magician did. So it was thinking outside the box. And then every magician at the time was doing a, uh, a zigzag illusion, including myself. <laughs> and, you know, Copperfield comes out and decides to dance with the zigzag and turn it into a little play and a little story. And and he thought outside the box. So I liked the fact that, OK, we can take traditional stuff that everybody does and do it in a different way. So you're not compared to everybody. Uh, mm -hmm. And that became the basis of my show, just entertaining people and amazing them, but in a different way, unlike they have ever seen before. You know, you go on a cruise ship and you see a magician and you, they're doing the zigzag and you go, I've seen that one already. You yeah. know, I wanted my show to be more like, oh, we're having a magician. Uh, oh, wait, <laughs> I've never seen it like this before. Ah. This is you know, totally different. Now, now you mentioned also that, uh, you know, you have to learn from, from the mistakes of the people that you admire and how they uh, overcame them. Are there any of those pitfalls that you saw, uh, you know, some, some of the, your, your successful forefathers fall into that you wanted to avoid? Uh, at the time when I was studying David and Doug, uh, I wasn't smart enough to actually learn from their mistakes. I learned <laughs> from them later, later on in my career when I, when I became a professional. Before I did my TV show, uh, I was corresponding with Darren Brown uh, in England, asking him different things because he had reached a lot of television success at the time. And, and basically asking him, if you had to do it all over again, what would you do different and what would you avoid doing? And, and I hit him with some questions that he emailed me back and said, nobody has ever asked these before. <laughs> and he sent me long, long emails with, with the responses that I was looking for in terms of what to avoid. And, and it helped define my persona and what I claim and what I don't claim. And, and with mentalism, you're writing a fine line and I really wanted to stay out of trouble. Uh, so I thought about it long and hard. Uh, and came up with who I am right now. That kind of leads into my next question. Obviously, you have been on TV a few times. I'm one of, one of the few guys who really has gotten a couple bites at the Apple in terms of network television. You had your NBC special, The Mentalist, and then you were back on TV with Phenomenon last year. What is the biggest lesson that you learned about the TV business that nobody told you, uh, or maybe even you know, Darren uh, hinted at, that, that you learned in that experience with The Mentalist? What, what really kind of hit you out of left field? Well, The Mentalist was a, uh, a taped show. Mm -hmm. I was executive producer, so it was a very nice learning experience how to produce a show and how to you know, give the, uh, the network the end product uh, and how the network gets involved in the show itself and how they come along and they police things. So that was a real good uh, lesson. Then yeah. I did Phenomenon. And that was a real good lesson because it was a live TV show. Uh, and I had never done you know, a live show like that before. And somebody else was the producer. So I kind of sat back and let them do it. But the biggest lesson that I learned, 
it, it was a hard lesson to learn. Now, I'm, I'm a lot older than you and probably a lot older than most <laughs> of your listeners. Well, in viewers opinion, now. When I, was, when I first started out, when you made it to television, you were a somebody. Yeah. There was three networks out there, CBS, NBC, and ABC, and that was it. And when you made it on The Tonight Show, man, your career and your life changed forever. Now, a couple of hundred stations that are out there and reality shows and people constantly churning through the media. The one thing I expected, and because it was old school thinking, is I thought once my TV show hits, my life is going to change. Yeah. I am going to become a star and the paparazzis are going to be sitting outside my house and they're going to... And that doesn't happen anymore. So the biggest lesson for me was the day after my TV show aired and I woke up, I was like, today's no different than yesterday. You know, <laughs> I got a real good demo video to use and I got a, a bank account full of money, but you just have to keep chopping at it and, and working at it. And uh, I expected a lot, a lot of things to change, which they didn't. So that was, that was a tough lesson for me. So did that kind of inform your expectations on Phenomenon? Did, did you know that going in, that, that you know, the network landscape wasn't what it used to be and, uh, and you weren't going to have uh, you know, everybody knocking at your door the way that you kind of expected to maybe at the beginning of uh, Phenomenon when that was about to hit? I didn't expect it at all in Phenomenon. Okay. Uh, and there was people in the show, including some of the production staff that were saying things to me and to the rest of the cast, you know, like, oh, you know, don't tell anybody what hotel we're staying at. We got to keep it a secret. <laughs> and they, had this, uh, they had this American Idol thinking, you know, once yeah. the show is, we're going to be huge. And I was like, guys, it ain't going to happen. Yeah. You know, and trust me, it's it's not going to be that way. You can tell anybody you want where the hotel is. And and I used to tell the guys uh, on the show that what you're now taking part in is going to be a popularity contest because they're going to make us all look good on TV. Uh, and whoever comes out of this ahead and gets the most votes, it's just going to be a popularity thing, who the public likes, because we're all going to do really good mentalism. We're all going to perform really good. Uh, so they had higher expectations than I did, and I kept bringing them back down to earth. You know, after we did the first show, and there was four of us that were on, and the next day we, we met down in the hotel lobby, and we were going to Starbucks for breakfast, and, you know, one person I was going to mention to it is, comes down with, you know, sunglasses and a hat. And I was like, you got to be kidding. You know, nobody's <laughs> going to recognize you. You know, how many pens do you have in your pocket that you think you're going to run out of things signing autographs? Yeah. We went out and we came back and they were like, boy, my life hasn't changed. And I was like, absolutely. It, it doesn't happen that way with television these days anymore. You know, it, it, you don't have to be talented to get on TV. Perfect example is Paris Hilton. Ah. As big as, um, and, and look at the talent factor there. Not a whole lot. No, 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 not at all. But everybody knows who she is. So uh, with Phenomenon, there was no expectations at all. I was just looking to get my name out there and put butts in seats over at the casino. Yeah. And, you know, I'm sure Penn didn't want to be the next Fred Astaire. He did Dancing with the Stars to put butts in seats. And, and when you're out here in Vegas, that's the bottom line.